What is up YouTube? We are back with another video and today we are going to cover youth athlete mental toughness training. So I was sent this video here. You gotta be hungry. You guys are young and healthy. I'm old and washed up. Why do I want it more than you? Isn't that a fair question? And oh my goodness, nothing ruffles my feathers more than a coach like that. It drives me insane. Insane. It, it's not a fair question. He said, is it a fair question that I grind more than you even though I'm old? It, no. You are a 40-year-old man, I don't know how old he is, but 40-year-old man that has dedicated his life work into baseball. He pays his family through baseball, through coaching baseball, right? They are 10 years old. They went there to play catch with their buddies and have fun and play a game they love. And they probably didn't have much of a choice. Their, co their parents signed them up, paid the bill to get them there, right? So it's not even like college athletes where they're going out of their way to go there. These are youth athletes, right? So they're showing up because they were dropped off there by their parents. They, that's not to say they don't actually want to be there, but like they didn't make that final decision. So it's, it's not even the college athletes you're talking to. You're talking to these 10-year-olds. Is it a fair question? No, it's not, right? You're, you're, not, you're not teaching hard work. You're not teaching mental toughness. You're not creating the next Tiger Woods through this thought process of yours, right? You're just ruining the game that they love and taking away reps that they could be getting done during that time, during your big speech, for clicks on the internet. And, th and that's, that's all it is. And that, that, that's one of the things that drives me the most insane about that kind of old school style of coaching, this hard work, grit, philosophy, I'm going to teach you. Like, I, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to do it. Uh, it's, it's such a gross virtue signal because it, it, it eliminates what it actually is, which is you feel the need to be the person talking, the person with attention, the person with a message. And that is what it is. So it's, it's like a, this selfish internal need to be seen, right? Packaged up as a, I'm doing this for the athletes. You're not doing it for the athletes. Look at every single one of those athletes. Go back and watch the video. This is one of my favorite things. Go back and watch the video and just look at the athlete's eyes and expression when the coach is talking. Half of them aren't even looking at him. And the other half are like, bro, what are we doing? Like, why, why are we getting yelled at? What's going on right now? And there's, of course, there's a camera going the whole time. Like, I'm not even faulting recording your sessions, but I'm like, like is that really like, that was probably planned. You know, like that was probably a little planned speech there. Um, so it, it's just kind of this gross packaged up idea of, I'm doing it for the kids when it's not at all what is happening there. You are doing it for yourself, right? And if you're going to be open and honest, I'm not saying don't coach for yourself. I, I'm, I've gotten in, in that rant before. I think that every coach that says, I don't do it for myself, I do it for the kids. It, it's, oh man, you just don't understand like psychology and, and how we actually work as humans. And the more you try to hide that, the more you get resentful and you take it out on your athletes in exactly those speeches. But it gets wrapped up in this weird like virtue signal of, I'm doing it for my athletes. It's not for me. It's going to teach them. And it could not be further from the truth. You were doing it for yourself to gain likes, clicks, becoming the person, even just that feeling of like, I'm the speaker. And the athletes are getting a negative. They, they, they are losing reps. They, they no longer enjoy going to it. And I posted this on Instagram and even like an hour ago. And I already have, it's probably 40 DMs slash comments of, Hey, I was burnt out of a sport because of a coach exactly like this. Hey, uh, even though there's a dude talking about Yu-Gi-Oh, how he went to a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh tournament for the first time after just loving Yu-Gi-Oh and playing with his friends, and his friends went to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament when they were 12, and a bunch of old dude just like um, chastised them for how they were playing Yu-Gi-Oh and ruined a card game for them because it, it, it gets on like we need to feel important, we need to feel valued, so we're going to push down somebody else. And all these comments of these athletes that have had these coaches who swear that their message is needed, swear that it changes the athlete's life, swear that it betters their life. And within an hour of posting this, I have 40 athletes that have ruined their athletes, right? Right. So getting to the point of like the survivorship bias there is insane. You, you aren't teaching these athletes hard work. You're not teaching these athletes mental toughness, right? The athletes that think the way that you think and already have this like weird grit bug, you, you see it in athletes. I've seen it in five-year-olds. Like that athlete has that hardworking bug at five years old and they're just going to grind the rest of their life, right? And then they, the other people don't. They just need to be motivated in a different way or have interest. And honestly, I think there's much better ways than to have that grit mindset. Um, I feel like I've had that. Like for my, I, as a kid, I got in trouble for doing my brother's chores. Like that, that's just the weird mindset. I, it's, that's not a taught thing from my coaches, right? Like it's just the weirdness that I am. That's the bug that I have. It's the genetics that we are wired to be. Like we're just working bugs. So 
working bugs are going to survive this message, right? Because they already think this way. They already have that bug. They already work. You're going to take the 10 working bugs that survived your speech and you're going to say, well, look, look at Austin. Like I preached to him hard work and mental toughness. Look where he's at. It's like, you didn't teach me that. I, I, I already had that in me. I was, I was already doing these things. Then I just gravitated towards somebody that tell, told me what I was doing. And I probably, I needed to hear a lot of times that hard work wasn't the answer. There, there's different options. There is uh, not getting locked in a rut, like not going just harder. There, there's different options. So I need a different coach, but I just, as an athlete, gravitated towards somebody that just thought the way that I thought that it took that bias. Right. And the coach then is like, well, look, look at the athlete that I created. Look at the thing that I did. And it's like, I already had that mindset. So your speech is not affecting me. No positive there, right? I'm not, I'm not getting a positive out of that. And you have the negative to where the athletes that aren't like that, you're not changing their mind. You're not helping them. You're making their sport, the thing that they love, the thing that they enjoy doing, the thing that they had enough interest in to show up to your class for, to show up to your session for, you made it not fun. And you, you yell at them. You made it like stressful, right? One of the, the psychological things is like how we operate under stress. And so many athletes do not operate very well under high stress situations. And then the number one coaching tool is this scream at an athlete when they mess up. Bro, like what are we doing here? Like our, our just approach, the psychological approach. And again, I'm, I'm seeing it in the youth athlete world. Like that's crazy. That's horrible. But it's don't stop there. I mean, it's your high school athletes, it's your college athletes. They don't need that speech. They don't, they don't need to be screamed at, right? That, that's not going to help them. You need to find a way to motivate them as a coach, to set up an environment as a coach to where they're trying hard because it's an interest level thing. And if it's not an interest level thing, you need to be the coach that has that conversation with the athlete and be like, why are you here? Like, why, why are we playing baseball? You don't really enjoy it, okay? <laughs> like we're having that conversation. You don't enjoy it. I know you don't have that interest level. Like, why are we doing it? Like, Oh, I feel like all this pressure from my parents or it's what I'm supposed to do. And then maybe you can actually have a real like life conversation. Cause you can tell the athlete for the first time, they don't actually need to do their sport, right? That, that that's not their identity or they can do it for a different reason. And I just feel like as coaches, we really butcher this message of psychological, like mental toughness and hard work because we feel important. Again, it's always that step back. Why are we saying the words that we're saying? I'm speaking in this YouTube video because I get attention for it again, right? Like I get attention, I get clicks, I get whatever it is, a reward, a dopamine hit. Why are we saying that message to the athletes? Is it for the athletes? And the answer is no, because the right option there is just take a step back and let them play catch or let them goof around or let them talk. Like that's another thing I see in like youth training. It's like all these, uh, these youth athletes will just be talking and goofing around and the, the, the people will be like, oh, shut up. Or like, we need to focus or we need to do this. It's like, they don't, they don't need to focus. Like they're having a great time. They're, they're exploring movement and they're doing the sport, right? They don't need to focus. You don't like the chaoticness. You can't handle the stress that is there. You can't handle not being listened to every single second. That's a you issue. You go fix that, right? Uh, or the other thing, I've been, there's this soccer camp at the, at our gym and it's, it's literally three years old, three-year-olds, three-year-olds to four-year-olds. And every single day to start the session for 10 minutes minimum, it's the coach talking to these three, I'm not lying to you, three years old. They are barely walking. Three to, I think seven is the highest they get to talking to these three to seven year olds about respect, about personal space, about values, about morals. It's like, bro, what are we doing? They are three years old. You just need to put a soccer ball out there and let them waddle around. They're not, they're not listening to you at all. It's such a weird, insane thought process of it's, it's as a coach, it's one of our only times to feel heard, right? People have to listen to us when we're a coach. And when that's our only outlet to get our message out, cause we, whatever, we have a bad, we have a bad community. We, we don't have a lot of close friends. We don't have somebody we can share this message to. We don't have a page, a YouTube, a ch camera here. Like if you don't have those outlets, your only outlet to be heard is that coaching session. And when that is your only outlet, your athletes get the brunt of it. And tying this all up, that, that is why it is so gross to me because it is rewarded on one end as you are a really good coach. If you give those speeches, you are the, uh, really thoughtful, you are really motivational, you are really encouraging, you are just this moralistic, virtuistic coach, and it's, it's wrapped up in this package and it's rewarded all the time when it's really this darker other thing that is you feel the need to be heard and you will do anything in your power to be heard. And if the athletes don't listen to you, you are going to take your resentment out 
on them. And you're going to take it out on speeches like that where you're screaming at them for not trying hard enough, right? So it could not be two more opposite things. The reason you are feeling that way is your issue. It is not the athlete's issue. We need to make training fun for these athletes. They need to show up. They don't need to. They don't need to show up. They, if they show up, we are going to have fun. We are going to make the sport fun. We are going to play the game and treat it like the game that it is. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you have better athletes come out of that situation than the mental toughness approach, right? Mental toughness approach, again, you, you are just going to have people like that were born like me that just have that weird wiring in our heads that just go, 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 go. We're already going to do that. You don't need to tell us to do that more, right? And we're going we're gonna to need, we're going to feel like we need that approach and you don't need to give that to us. We need to go to somebody that's going to tell us to be more creative, uh, to take a step back, to relax a little bit, to be more, a little bit fluid. So you're also holding us back because we feel like we're doing the right thing when you tell us that, right? And all these other athletes that don't have that bug, they're not getting anything out of these speeches. They, they aren't. They are just sitting there listening to them or you're killing that speech for them. And you need to find a different way to communicate with your athletes to make them have fun. Again, make training fun again. Stop the crazy nonsense of this whole mental toughness speech. And we will see you tomorrow for another lifting day.